So let me talk to you about sharing your work. Why is that important? It's, it's really part of my whole story as a photographer. And this is a chapter, you know, in this book. My story as a photographer was, you know, I was a pretty good photographer when I was a teenager. And then I went into a completely different direction, became a management consultant in Silicon Valley, really didn't even pick up a camera other than snapshots for decades. Why is that? You know, I find like many things that you want to have kind of some focus space in order to, you know, really do photography. And I just wasn't focused at that time. I mean, I was building a business, I was raising a family, and I just really didn't didn't have that in my in my space. But then I built the company, it was doing great, but there was something missing and that was photography. So I sold it to my partners and I said, I'm gonna go back to photography. And I picked it up, guys, from scratch because I'd been a darkroom photographer and all of a sudden we're in the digital age. I've never used Photoshop. This is in the early 2000s, late 1998 maybe or something, early, early Photoshop. Fortunately, one of my kids was pretty adept at it. He showed me what to do. And I realized I had a lot of photographs, a lot of negatives sitting in boxes and photographs sitting in boxes. And there's this unfulfilled feeling when you haven't taken your work out and shown it to other people. My dog River is nudging me right now. She doesn't get why I'm staring at a blank screen instead of talking to her. It just never makes sense to her. Anyway, I said, okay, I'm gonna get this stuff off the drive, put it on the wall. I scheduled some shows immediately and I got into a magazine. I did some magazine spreads. I just kind of got into it. I thought, I've got to figure this out. So I'm going to go for everything I can. I started selling work in Big Sur at a cool shop. Um, I ran some Google ads. I even did like portraiture for people. I kind of just went all out. I thought, I'm going to find every way I can to basically jumpstart my career. And so, you know, that, that was a big awakening for me. It was a transformation. And there is a transformation from your photography in your head or in your hard drive or on your phone to getting other people to get river. Getting, <laughs> she's, she's photobombing me. Getting other people, <laughs> she's just, going wild now, biting the microphone cord and everything. Getting other people to see your stuff is honestly, if you haven't done that, you got to do that. And you, it's a continuous process. Okay, so that's why you want to do it. Now, how do you do it? Well, first of all, you got to make photographs. You got to make, you notice I didn't say take, you make photographs that you feel you're your worst critic. You have to pass your own test. You have to you have to come up with photographs that you feel are worth sharing. And if they don't pass your test, don't bother to show them to somebody else. I'm not kidding. This is really important. And you're the first person you got to sell on your work. So that means <laughs> this doggo of mine. That means you got to have good photographs. And how do you get there? You follow my advice in this book and in my courses. My courses follow this book, which is really honing your photography skills so that you have work that you genuinely feel proud about sharing. That's gonna change as you go through it. I look at stuff I shared early on and I'm like, ah, not as good as I, I wouldn't pass my test now. So that's a good thing. You're always gonna raise your own bar, but you gotta get your chops in as a photographer. And that means visualization, knowing your camera, knowing your equipment so well, as our friend Bob Holmes says, that the camera doesn't get in the way of your photography. Don't let your camera get in your way, because if it does, you're gonna miss shots, right? Don't fiddle with your camera. That means you haven't learned it well enough. You gotta get to know this thing like a close friend. 
Then you got to do your capturing, which is composition and lighting. And I definitely have stuff about composition in the book, but also in my other book, Secrets to Amazing Photo Composition. Lighting, I talk mainly about natural lighting. Um, then you got to process your images, which is also based on your vision. Then you get to sharing. You got to know those. Those are five steps, guys. And they go around in a cycle. And that's really our trademark. The thing that makes AYP different than what other people are talking about is we're not focused on just one thing at a time. We're really trying to do a holistic job here because you share stuff it's going to add to your vision because you're kind of seeing what other people visualize from your photographs. With that information, you go back. That helps you with the next photograph. Also true with equipment. The more you learn about your equipment, the more you see the things that you can do with that equipment. You go, oh, wow, I've got a new way to visualize because I've learned something. Same thing in processing. Like when you really learn to process images black and white, like with DxO, Silver Effects Pro, for instance, it opens up doors for you, how you can visualize a photograph. So those things all work interactively. That's really, really important in the process. I'm going to ask you guys a question. You can throw me an answer. So how many of you are sharing your work? And if you're not, what's, what's the bug? Why not? Throw that in the chat if you would. I'd like to hear from you. Like, this is so important because when you get out your work, and I don't mean, I didn't, you notice I didn't even say social media. I do stuff on social media like everybody else, but you know what? I call it fast food sharing. I don't like fast food. I mean, I like it like anybody else. It tastes good, but it's, you know, how do you feel an hour later after you eat a Big Mac and fries and Kentucky Fried Chicken. It tastes good. They make it. They make it so it tastes good. But a lot of other things taste good going down, but then the after effects aren't worth it. Fast food sharing is social media. You get a millisecond as somebody's scrolling by, and oh, I like that, or I comment on that. That's not really great sharing. Sharing means you, you put something there so people can experience it. That's why it's great to have it on the wall. Be sure you're sharing your work on your own walls. Go to Bay Photo Lab and get some prints made and that'll take care of that. All right, does anybody have? Okay, DP review is a great path, yeah. Um, DP review is closing down. What? Really? Seriously? It's owned by Amazon. What? Why would they close that down? I don't know. DP review, I have to... Dip, yep, they're differ. closing. Wow. I'm going to beg to differ with you. I find there's a lot of snarkiness on DP review, honestly. I'm, I'm, why would they close down? Boy, B&H uh, is going to be happy to hear that. Yeah, it was just announced two days ago, I think. Oh, I'll have to read up on that. Anyway, thanks for the heads up on that. Uh, I don't I don't know of any platform that's great except for the AYP Club. See, we created that because we want a space where you could get honest critiques, not snarky critiques. You know, the problem with I find with the snarkiness is like people who can't do criticize. You don't want criticism. You want a critique. Very different. All right, so yeah, wow, April 10th, that's it. Amazing, I'm surprised. I know the guy that started, I, he moved on to another post at Amazon. They bought they bought DP Review from him. He was in England, they bought it. And anyway, a long story. Okay, so share your work. Let me know your thoughts about sharing. You can always ping me in, um, in the AYP club, maybe Jared will just put a post in there to kind of follow this conversation. Question, are you sharing? What are your experiences in sharing your work? If you're not, well, why not? What is it? Are you afraid to put your work out there? I get it. Uh, I have that feeling too. I mean, I don't know a photographer that doesn't have some trepidation when they put their work out. How is it going to be received? You know, what are people going to think? 
is this, am I worth it? You know, is this worthy of, you know, making a big print or putting it into a book? Those are all concerns and considerations going right on here. And we want to try to get around that stuff. All right, let's jump over to your work. Let's do some critiquing. Before I leave this subject, I'm going to say it again. Just keep in mind that the end product of the cycle of photography is sharing your work. Now, one thing I learned about visualization from Ansel Adams is he would visualize all the way through to the finished print. Where is that print going to reside? Is it going to be on your wall? Is it going to be in a book? Is it going to be in a magazine? Where are you showing that? And that would guide his process. You know, he had ma massively huge prints in his house, for instance. Or is it going to be a little tiny print this big? You know, I mean, that determines a lot of things as you make choices along the way. So always think in your visualization process of where you're going to end up sharing that work. Okay? All right. Let me know, guys. Please subscribe and enable the bell so you don't miss any of our new shows like the video and please share it and leave your comments. I love hearing from you. And remember to get out and capture your own images of life.